Well, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to another podcast. Um, it's been a hot one. I've had a couple of weeks of really warm weather and it's the, the first cool day actually for a while. And Well, I'll say that. It was cool this morning and then it's come hot again this afternoon. But luckily we do have a few clouds, a bit of cloud cover today. And we had a thunderstorm three or four days ago. It's put a bit of water in the river. I've been umming and ahhing what to do today, but there's not a lot happening on the surface there's no hatches to speak of um, not seeing anything rising really or very little um, so it was a toss up between doing a bit of spider fishing and nymphing and I've gone for a bit of nymphing I think it's about right for today but fine and far off so I've got the 11 foot 2 weight uh, nymph maniac from Vision um, I've got straight through uh, indicator mono to a tippet ring. So I've got about 30 yards of indicator mono right down to a tippet ring. And then I've got about five foot of very fine Rio Fluoroflex Strong in a 6X, which is very fine, but it's 3.8 pounds breaking strain. Uh, point fly, I've got a little Joracell Nymph Tungsten Bead size 16. And then on the dropper, I've got another uh, Tungsten Bead in the 16, which is just a pheasant tail. Uh, to make it a bit more interesting, I've, I've actually come down to the bottom of one of the beats I fish. I've never really fished here before, but there's two or three... I'm going to have a bit of an explore, actually, because I've not seen that much of this river. There's two or three good riffly bits in front of me, and the, the fish have definitely been in the fast water recently, in the very fast riffly stuff, or just behind it. So uh, it's, it's a beautiful afternoon, actually. So the bit of cloud cover just come over. The river here is... It's got to be 20, 30 foot across, um, varying... And in front of me, I've got lots of overhanging trees. They've got meadows on either side, lots of willow bushes. And then there's two distinct tongues of current, one on the right, one on the left. Um, so I'm going to start tapping these nymphs up. So no fly line, just indicator mono straight through to a tippet ring. Obviously, I've got back in on the fly reel as well. Um, so it's going to be very fine work and, and as far off as I can. I'm going to be tossing these nymphs up just using the weight of the tungsten and obviously this rod will do it and um, it's designed just for this type of fishing so it's all kind of fine stuff and then it's just a case of watching that indicator mono um, so it's kind of your own nymph in in a way but with a bit of a longer line like I say it's amazing how you can get the uh, these nymphs to cast um, even on such a, a fine line but it's just good for this type of fishing because it's that kind of into summer fishing now and the fish are, are definitely a little bit uh, more cautious than they were so I'm kind of just watching the indicator mono it stands out beautifully as it comes down the river and I can retrieve a little bit of slack if I need to, just like upstream nymphing. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a cross between upstream nymphing and Euro nymphing. It's upstream at the beginning and then more into like a traditional Euro contact style nymphing, however you want to call it. I'm just nudging the bottom there, which is good. The flies are drifting down this Tonga current and then they're just nibbling the bottom as they get towards me so that's just about right and I'm hoping either a fish is in the current intercepting food and we shall take the flies on the drift or if there's one sat back a bit in the deeper water the flies will get down to the zone a bit sooner so it's not been the best conditions recently um, we had a bit of a lift of the water on one of the rivers further north that I fish and um, there was a couple of salmon and sea trout moving through so I went up to have a go at them a few days ago and I got there in the afternoon and it was just the brightest blue sky and red hot um, terrible conditions really but um, I didn't manage any salmon or sea trout but couldn't stop catching chub I must have had I must have had seven or eight chub on big orange cascade salmon flies so uh, 
that and a few brownies it kept it interesting one nice one actually one that put a reasonable bend in the rod but uh, yeah the, the chub were absolutely on it right get my wading stick which is essential on this river and then um, we'll keep pushing up that's the that's the zone there just off the willows onto the bubbly bubbly water it's quite deep here actually I wasn't expecting it to be so deep let's get up into that stuff no bad thing it looks absolutely ripe for a fish this to be fair nice pace of water nice depth plenty of food moving down they've got overhanging willows for cover and beetles and whatnot dropping in so it looks perfect so let's just see if we can winkle one out to say it's the perfect rod for this job actually if you want to fish little nymphs fine and far off and just a, like a mono type rig this rod is absolutely cock on I had a bit of a panic actually just setting up because I did the classic of leaning the rod up against the wing mirror of the car as I was getting my waders on and then my truck has mirrors that close automatically when you lock up and of course I locked up and the mirror closed on the rod just for a second I thought oh god but it seems all right I don't think it's cracked it luckily there's plenty of flex in these and it seems to have done the job and flexed okay well, it's actually getting fairly deep here oh we're into a fish now took, I think it's probably a grayling lovely just took in the deeper water Not a bad fish actually. Nice to be the first, it is a grayling, I can see it, the first grayling of the uh, of the season for me. Come well, on. Yay, there we go. Not bad fish, about half a pound. Good. so that's that's a really encouraging start because it, it's just where I thought it would be and uh, hopefully when that happens the fish are behaving themselves and you, they're in the river exactly where you want them to be and nice to get a grayling after the, uh, the start of the season too right then let's get that uh, nymph back in there It is getting deep actually, I don't know how much further I can get up here. I was hoping to wade um, right up to the riffle. But I don't think I can actually wade it. It's already up to my uh, proverbials and, and more. So I don't think I'll have a prod with my wading stick and see how much further I can get. And in a position like this, I always find an 11 foot rod when you're this style of nymphing just gives you that extra bit of distance and that extra control and reach provided the river's big enough I love an 11 foot I know the most popular size of nymphing rod I think is a 10 foot 3 weight but 
I, I, I do have bo both actually. Um, a 10 foot three where I'll use the slightly smaller rivers, but this one where I've got the room and I want to really get the reach and the height and the contact. I love fishing the uh, 11 foot two weight. Great fun to play fish on as well. Right, let me grab my wading stick and just have a prod and see if I can find a way up here. No, it's not really going to let me do it, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we'll leave that. Um, and I'll have a little wander down the river. I've seen the pools above me, which I can fish on my way back up. But I've never really seen around the corner here. So I'm just intrigued to see if there's another pool like this, because this is lovely. So, really interesting piece of water here. There's uh, the river really narrows, a load of boulders both sides, and it's put one big torrent of uh, current right down the middle, and the stream coming in next to it as well. So it's absolutely ripe for for nymphing. So I'm going to get in here and have a have a fish. I've never fished up here before. I've never even uh, seen this bit of river. So it'd be really exciting to to fish this up, and because it's such a torrent of uh, water that's coming in. There's a really nice pace of current. I mean, it's got to be for 50 metres. So uh, I'll fish up this top bit here and then I might even, if I can get in further down, fish up the bottom. But, um, it's hard to describe really. It's on a gradient and there's boulders each side and definite narrow. So the river goes from about probably 25, 30 foot to about 15. So you've got all that water coming through. And um, it's this, it's perfect for nymphing. Now we'll, uh, let's get going. A nice rocky bottom here as well. There's plenty of um, little spots for fish to get in and you know, get a bit of cover from the current. I think I can almost fish right up into the, uh, the top of this as well, which is where I want to be. If you could, uh, if you could build a piece of river that was suitable for Czech or Euro style nymphing and design it, this is practically what you'd do. Just laid out absolutely perfectly. There's bound to be something in it, it's just whether I can cover it or not. And what I'm letting happen here, because it's so quick, is I'm actually letting the nymphs go right past me downstream. And then they're going to naturally rise up behind me. So that rising action can be quite, um, quite tempting for fish, like the nymphs are ascending. Now I'm just getting to the bit now where I'd expect a fish. So getting towards the very beginning, the top of the, the current, just as it's pouring down really fast. Just getting towards the top of it. And where I'd expect a fish is just off to the side, just on the seam. So I'd expect a fish just to be sat, just picking stuff off as it first enters this run. And I'm just coming up onto that bit now. Let's see if there's anything at home. Right, I've pretty much fished that out as you can hear me over the stream that's coming in there. Nothing in the really fast though, so I'm going to have a walk down and uh, see if I can either fish the bottom of this run or it looks like there's another pool a bit further down. A really interesting piece of river though, just to see it, I think it's an unusual, obviously man-made. Um, so I'll definitely explore this again. Well, I found another good riffle, but again, it's, 
it's scoured out a big hole so I can't really there's only one bit I can fish I'll try fishing there's just scattered some sheep over the far bank just darted out there seeing me so there's a nice big riffly head to the pool and kind of two tongs of current bit of a back eddy in the middle but I'd love to get up to fish where it's come and fill in the pool but I can't it's just too deep so I'm just stuck at the back really so I'll just make the best of it and just have a short cast here just see if there's anything in this back end and it looks a little bit whirly but you never know there could be a little grayling down there or something for me Yeah, if I prod anywhere in front of me, it's uh, it'd be up to the top of my wader, so I'm just going to have to make the best of this. Long, big reach, high rod. Get the nymphs down and then just track them down. It's a shame I can't find a way to the top of that pool. Never mind. Doesn't quite feel like I'm in the right position here. Oh, he says that. I'm into a fish. <laughs> that feels like another grayling. I just. It is another grayling. I just let it rise up slightly at the back of the cast and back of the run, and it. I felt a little knock knock and just lifted up and. There it is, doing its typical grayling thing of twisting and turning. This rod can take plenty of side strain. You can really get a bend in the rod. It plays fish beautifully. It's not a bad fish actually. Let's tighten that drag up a touch has to work but it's not a bad fish <sighs> certainly bigger than the last one right here's the danger area as I bring it in and get it to the surface come on you come on, come on. it's a good pound if not a bit more, maybe a pound and a quarter. And this one's had the pheasant tail. Come on. Super. Yes, a lot better fish that. I imagine come winter time that will probably be maybe touching pound and a half, pound and three quarters once it's fed up through the summer. Yeah, sheep's even pleased I caught a fish as well. Right, slip you back. Great, well I'll have a few more casts. So that's two grayling in the, the deeper slats at the bottom of the pools, which is pleasant. Well, if you remember, so, oh, nearly fell in. <laughs> the, whew, I nearly went for a dip. Uh, the last pool I fished, I said I couldn't get up to the hot spot because it was too deep. So what I've done is walked up the river, got in, waded down. Now I'm going to have to fish this a bit unconventionally, more like a downstream spider, really, because uh, I don't want to wade through the bit I need to fish. So I'll, I'll try that first and then see how I can just wade down and get a bit of an upstream cast. Just to, Unravel this dropper first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
there's no rules if the river insists that you have to present in a certain way that's maybe a bit unorthodox you you adapt and present in that way because as long as you get your fly in front of a fish and it it triggers a response that's all that matters how you got there doesn't matter and just running this down like a like a downstream spider really because it's the only way that allows me to fish this nice bit of water still getting a bit of depth and I'm still getting a downwards movement just in the in the current in the head of the the pool And you'll know if you get a take here because it's going to be an absolute arm wrencher. There's got to be a fish here. Perfect. Perfect spot for them. Just a case of getting the presentation. I'm going to try and weigh this in a minute I'm going to make sure I fish it all first from upstream before I even attempt to wade through it because if I wade through it and spook a fish that's a fish I could have uh, could have potentially caught oh that was a take aye 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 typical little downstream pluck and pull on the fly that was Be nice to fish in a spider in here actually but I didn't fancy carrying two rods today so I'd expect a trout in this quicker water right I have one more chuck just try this slacker oh. Eddie here. In fact, I can probably just get one under the trees. She's just there. Just a little chuck. Quite deep there. Right, no, nothing there. So I'm going to attempt to wade now. If it all goes quiet. It sounds muffled, I'm, I'm gone downstream, so it's quite treacherous this, so I'm just going to really take my time. And I'm actually keeping the fly in the water. So I've got the fly beneath me, working in the current as I wade, because there's always a chance of picking up a bonus fish as I'm wading. It's not quite as bad as I thought, actually. I'm going to try not to wade too much through the areas I'm going to fish. I'll just go down as deep as I can. Right, that's probably... That's as far as I want to go. So it's opened up a, a little bit of an opportunity but not much just get a couple of casts into this there's three tongues of current here there's one on the left one in the middle one on the right so I'm stood in the middle and then um, it's just opened up the one on the right just a case of seeing if there's anything there no I have a few more chucks I'll get right into the slack stuff if I can sorry into the fast stuff is where I want to be Push it out a touch more. 
pizza. Yeah, nice brownie. This is a nice fish. Come on, you. Yes, in the net. Beautiful. Oh, super dupes. And you've taken the pheasant tail. Super. Right, I'll just uh, work that riffle a bit more and just see if there's another one above it. I can imagine another fish stationed above it. I didn't quite get to the top, so I can get in there with my little nymphs. It is a lovely way of fishing for summer, summer fish, this, because it's so, so delicate and fine. Right, that's right up into the riffle there. It's just caught the bottom, so that's good. It means I'm getting into the zone. Just a rock. Well, I'm into a lovely pool here. Again, it's deep. Um, the river's really wide, it's gone to a good 30 or 40 foot, very thin, and then it races down that thin gradient. And there's a lovely even current all the way into the pool, bubbly water. It's right, you could fish this with a dry if they're rising. Certainly an imp, be great fishing with a spider. I mean, I'd even be tempted to throw a big streamer in here to this, it really gets deep and wide at the bottom. Um, I've had to walk through where I want to fish up. So again, what I'm gonna do is just chuck some downstream just get it into some of the slacks and just move the nymphs a bit. Just see if there's a bonus fish downstream and it just rest that water where I've been, uh, where I've walked through. Just for five minutes, I'll just rest it and then anything I've disturbed, hopefully will just get its confidence back. And um, I'll just fish downstream and just see if there's a, a bonus fish there really. Can't wade anymore it's too deep so again I'm just having to make use of the reach of the rod and give the flies a bit of movement in, in slack water if you're gonna have to nymph you, you really want to give the flies some movement give them a bit of life well I've stripped through the uh, the slacks with the nymphs and I've let it run down the tongue of water beneath me, not of any pool. So I'm gonna, hopefully I've rested anything I've disturbed. So I'm really gonna start working this current above me now in a more conventional nymphing style. There's a lot of water to go at here. Uh, it's not too quick where I am here. So I'm gonna try uh, running it down these slacker bits first. And then as I progress, I can to the left of me the water's fairly slow, to the right of me it's coming down at a fair torrent, so I'm going to probe both sides. Start with the right hand side actually, I'll go into the fish some of this quick stuff first. a little pull I think. I think something just had a little bit of a pluck at the fly. Oh 
Oh, and another little plot there. Just missed that. Fishing just at the end of my range. Just stabbed away and I felt a little kick as I lifted into it. See if I can cover that again. It was just on the seam of the uh, fast water. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Yes, I'm in. Into the quick water. Ah, oh, it's off. I sneezed. I had to put one. <laughs> I'd cast in. And I was going to sneeze and I put one on up to my face. And I got a fish on. <laughs> and I couldn't quite control it. That was in the, the, the very, very fast water. I think that was another trout. Never mind. <laughs> Would be the very second I sneeze. I've not had a take for half an hour, and then the one where I sneeze, I uh, I hook the fish. See if there's another one in there. Yeah, just where you'd I'd expect it to be. That's what I'm really enjoying about the fishing at the minute. Everything's where it should be. I don't know if there'll be another one in here or not. Right, that's that pulled on, and I, I think that's probably me done for the podcast. It's been a lovely afternoon's fishing. I think I got the uh, the tactics about right. I've only seen one rise. I think I've had is it two grayling and a brownie. I've lost one. I've had a couple of bumps. So it's been a nice hour or two, whatever it's been. Um, thank you so much for listening again. Uh, if you need any help or advice, get in touch. Uh, visit us in our shop in Sheffield. Um, and um, if you want to buy flies and tackle online, it's www.peaksflyfishing.com. If you're interested in a guided day with me or a lesson with me or one of our coaches, then it's www.peaksflyfishing.com. Until next time, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.